Well, they finally did it. The North Carolina Utilities Commission voted to cancel the solar net metering program for Duke Energy in North Carolina. What does this mean for prospective solar homeowners? And what does this mean for homeowners that have already made the investment in solar power for their home? We're going to be answering those questions and much, much more in today's video. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 10 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean renewable energy. Now, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge you're going to find expert reviews on solar panels, batteries, inverters, pretty much all the different technology and equipment that makes up a home renewable energy or energy storage system, uh, as well as relevant industry news like today's video here where I'm going to be talking about the new rule change that just passed in North Carolina that's going to gut much of the payback potential for the solar net metering program. Now, when we talk about a solar net metering program, what we mean is it is a two-way relationship with the power company. Uh, during daylight hours, if you have solar panels producing, not only can you power your home directly, but you can also sell your excess solar back to the power company uh, for full price credit. And so the way it works is your meter essentially runs backwards during daylight hours, building up all the extra credits for the solar that you're producing, which would then offset what you pull back in from the utility during evening hours, so that if you look at the entire billing cycle, uh, it balances out or it nets out to zero. That's what we call it net metering. It goes both ways. Uh, but what happened last month is that the largest utility in North Carolina, Duke Energy, just voted to change their net metering policy in favor of a time of use policy. Now, this is exactly the same thing that we saw in California, where they used to have in California uh, an equal one for one net metering trading back and forth. But you see, the power companies don't like this arrangement because what it allows you to do is you can essentially zero out your power bill with solar without having to pay for extra batteries to store any of your own energy. Very simply, if you have more electricity than you need, you just send it back to the grid. If you need more than you're currently producing, you just pull it from the grid. And all of that happens automatically without you having to store anything in a battery. And so this is what you want if you're a homeowner because it gives you the best dollar for dollar payback for your solar investment. Uh, in many cases, even with a 100% fully financed system, you could end up in California with a monthly payment for solar that, that's half or sometimes even less than half of what your normal utility payment is. Well, the power companies didn't like that. The power companies figure, hey, look, if you're gonna make us take the power back that these homeowners don't need, we don't wanna give them full retail price credit. Uh, after all, our business model is we buy at cheap wholesale rates from the power plants, and then we distribute that electricity and sell it at a much higher retail rate to the homeowner. And that's how we earn income as a electric utility. We buy cheap from the, the source of the electricity, the power plants, we get it to the, the end customer, the retail customer, and we charge a higher retail price. Uh, in many cases, it's two to three times the, the rate per kilowatt hour what uh, utility charges homeowners versus the rate that they're paying when they purchase the electricity from the power plant. Now, I'm not saying that's all profit. Obviously, the utility has a lot of expenses. They've got all the power lines, the linesmen, um, all the utility staff, uh, there's a lot that goes into it uh, to running that distribution utility. Um, but that's how they make their margin is the spread between the electricity wholesale cost and the retail cost to the customer. So the utilities say, look, we need a way that we can recover some of these lost revenues. So instead of offering a, a one for one net metering credit for solar households, instead, what we're going to transition to uh, is a time of use plan. Uh, and what a time of use plan means and again, this is the same thing that California went through a few years ago. But what a time of use plan means is that kilowatt hours that are consumed during peak hours are gonna be charged to the homeowner at about double the rate of power that's consumed or electricity that's consumed during off peak hours. So right now in North Carolina, as of this recording, you're looking at a proposed on peak rate of about 22 cents per kilowatt hour compared to the off peak rate of about 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And so again, what that means is that 
since now all kilowatt hours are not created equal, uh, in other words, uh, a kilowatt hour that you send to the grid, let's say right during the middle of the day at noon, you might get credited at a much, much lower rate than when you have to pull back electricity in from the power company, let's say late afternoon, evening, when your air conditioning is running the hardest. Well, now they're going to charge you nearly double the rate for that, that late afternoon kilowatt hour that you have to pull back in. So folks, all this boils down to, it's going to eat into your solar payback. Now, another thing that they're introducing is what they call grid access fees. And what the grid access fee is, is it's a fixed charge based on the size of your solar power system, an additional fixed charge that you have to pay every month, regardless of how much electricity you produce or consume. And so any solar system that's greater than 15 kilowatts in size is going to be subject to this grid access charge. Now, depending on whether you're in Duke Energy Progress or Duke Energy Carolina's territory, this access charge could be anywhere between $1.50 to over $2 per kilowatt of solar power installed. Uh, and again, this is a fixed charge that's gonna occur on your bill every month, regardless of how much solar your system produces or how much energy your home consumes. So again, this helps to boost the lost revenues or boost the revenues to the power company. Now, all of these changes are not gonna take place at once. Uh, Duke Energy is offering a bridge rate plan, which will be in effect from July of this year until January 1st of 2027. Uh, and essentially the, the bridge rate plan allows homeowners to take advantage of the existing one-for-one -one net metering credits. However, there will be some unavoidable fixed charges added to your bill. So it does provide for a few years of transition period, but it's still not as lucrative as the true one-for-one -one net metering program that's in effect right now. Uh, so folks, if you're out there, if you're looking at solar power options for your home, or if you've thought about going solar in the past and maybe you put the decision off, if you're looking to get the system in now, lock in your cost and, and more importantly, lock in a true one-for-one -one net metering buyback for the lifetime of your system, then now is the time to take action to have that system installed. Uh, and of course, as always, if, if you need to get a price quote or if you already have one and you wanna make sure you're getting the best deal and you need a comparison, you feel free to reach out to us on the link below there We'd be happy to set up a quick virtual call with one of our experts and we can provide some pricing and some information for you. Now, after January 1st, 2027, Duke Energy customers are only going to have access to the Solar Choice Plan, which means that the time of use metering would take effect, the one-for-one -one net metering credit would go away, and the additional fixed fees, the, the, the non-bypassable fees, they call it, and the grid access charges would all take effect. Now folks, this is a trend that we're seeing here. It was California just last year. You probably recall the video from last December when California voted to get rid of its net metering program. Now we're seeing Duke Energy, which is the largest for-profit utility provider in North Carolina, taking a step towards uh, getting rid of net metering altogether. Um, so again, if, if an investment in renewable energy is something that you're considering, I would say now is the time to get that system designed uh, certainly, if you're planning on financing the purchase of the system, now is also the time to lock your interest rate because right now, every time the Federal Reserve raises rates, we get an email two or three weeks later letting us know that the interest rates we have to charge for solar loans, as well as the origination fees, the closing costs to get those loans established, go up as well. Uh, I also should mention Duke Energy is also the second largest for-profit power company in Florida. Uh, right now we're doing a lot of the solar surge projects in Florida. So if they've already approved this change in North Carolina, and it was actually the North Carolina Utilities Commission that approved this change, it may not be long until Duke Energy in Florida considers a similar rule change. So folks, I think all that is just to say that if this is something that you're considering, uh, and maybe you haven't taken that step yet to lock in the program or to lock in your interest rate for financing, now is the time to do both of those things. And as always, you can just feel free to reach out to us on the link below, set up a free call with one of our experts, and we'd be happy to provide a no obligation quote for you. Well, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the information that we publish on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, and also hit that subscribe button as well. That way, as we have new videos that come out, 
it'll come up on your home page and you can stay up to date with us. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.